Well, sir, it's late afternoon as we approach the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here on the front porch, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook and their son, Mr. Rush Gook. Our friends are seated in a row on the top step but one, enjoying temperate breezes and splendid summer sunshine. Listen. When on earth are you going to get around to putting up our porch swing? You said the chains were rusted through. Buy new ones. Isn't that in your department? Well, let's see why it should be. You do all the shopping, purchasing, and huckstering for the outfit. Well, this is hardware, though. It's more of a man's job. You're the party that bought our new coal scuttle. All right. I'll go to Holder Brothers and lug 50 pounds of iron chains. <laughs> I will, Dr. Stitch. When? Oh, tomorrow. Well, don't forget. Otherwise, we'll be sitting here on the steps till Christmas like heathens. Hmm. What are you pondering over so deeply, little dove? I'm facing a problem concerning swings myself. Really? It's also a problem concerning nicer Scott. Nicer's a good boy. <laughs> yeah. What is the problem? Well, sir, I'm wondering if I'd be a horrible hypocrite if I made friends with nicer. I believe we got an understanding. You're to make friends with nicer and keep friends with nicer. Yeah, but all that off to one side. No, not all that off to one side. What I got in mind is something else again. Mm-hmm. Thing is, Gov, I don't like nicer and never will like nicer. However, right at this particular season, it would be to my advantage to cultivate his goodwill. He has in his possession a large box of chocolate? <laughs> no, not that quite. He has something in his possession you covet? He has something in his possession I could use, all right. What's that? The two trees in his backyard out by the garbage box. Papa is mystified. I'll explain. Okay. I bumped into Uncle Fletcher this morning on Kelsey Street. Oh, really? How is he? Fine. He never behaved like he was miffed. Uh-oh. He hasn't dropped by or telephoned since last week. Said he'd been very busy lately. What doing? <laughs> oh, riding around on garbage wagons, I guess. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad he didn't act miffed. Occurred to me once or twice in the last couple of days his feelings might have been hurt last time he was here. I don't think so. A person can never tell how he's going to take stuff. Hmm. What's this problem you face, Cousin Will? Uncle Fletcher's landlady's got a dandy hammock she brought down from Dixon. Yeah? I understand it's a peach. Big soft headrest, long fringe, plenty of room for two people, strong ropes, and a A number 100% high-class hammock from the word go. Uncle Fletcher offered to you? Yes, he did. We got no place to put any hammock. No, we haven't. And neither has Miss Keller. That's why Uncle Fletcher offered us the use of it for the summer. I begin to add two and two together and get... Nicer Scott. Yeah, nicer Scott. Those two trees in Scott's backyard out by the garbage box are exactly the right distance apart for a hammock. You could search this wide world over and never find it. No, I don't think so, Rush. Big pardon? I'm not such arms around the neck chums with Miss Scott. I'd feel like asking a favor like that. Like what? Requesting the use of their backyard. A hammock, Mom, is a wonderful thing. Yes, I know. Very comfortable. An individual can sprawl out and relax till who laid the chunk. Mm, hammocks is nice, all right. I was thinking I could cultivate a beautiful friendship with Nicer to where he'd be glad to offer them two trees of his. Mm, no. Other people's backyards is a horse of a different color. It's all right to borrow a cup of sugar, a dab of butter, and like that often neighbors, but the use of their backyards is something else again. And with Miss Scott chilly the way she is, the whole business is out of the question. Might possibly work out with Miss Donahue if she had trees the right distance apart for hammocks, but I'm afraid I'd have to draw the line at Miss Scott. Uh-huh. I was apprehensive you'd feel that way. Mm. Still in all, though, a fella hates to let the chance of laying in a hammock slip through his fingers. Nobody else around here got a yard with suitable trees? Uh-uh. Not a soul. Vernon Pago's Aunt May's got suitable trees, but she lives way to heck and going out on Morris Avenue. Maybe you better just forget it then. Hammock could certainly be swell this summer. Have you sounded out nicer on the matter, Sam? Yes, I have. What was his reaction? <laughs> about what you'd expect. I told him about it this noon, and a while ago when I come up the alley, he was standing out in his backyard with an axe. Axe? He was staring intently at one of the trees. Hmm. His idea was to terrify me, see. He wanted to give me the impression he was playing with the notion of chopping down one of the trees. Oh. 
If he chopped down one of the trees, of course, it'd remove all hopes for a hammock. Mm. Well, couldn't you and Nicer work out a deal on a cooperative basis? How you mean, Gar? Cold-blooded, down-to-the-bone business, undiluted by the milk of human kindness. I don't catch on. Well, you have a hammock. Nicer has the location for a hammock. Hammock and location are each worthless without the other. Couldn't an arrangement be set up whereby the two of you could pool your assets and obtain something to your mutual benefit? Huh? I have this in mind. You lay in the hammock on Mondays. Nicer lays in the hammock on Tuesdays. You lay in the hammock on Wednesdays. Nicer lays in the hammock on Thursdays. And so forth. Huh. Neither guy could feel obligated to the other. What would you think of that, man? Well, I could never bring myself to ask Miss Scott for the use of her backyard. Well, she'd be enjoying the use of your hammock, though. Be me asking the favor. Yeah, I suppose. Sure. And then there's also the angle Uncle Fletcher. What angle's that? If I accept the hammock and find a place to put it, he expects to lay in it considerable. He say so? Yeah. Hmm. Well, satisfactory schedule could still be worked out. Establish an understanding with Uncle Fletcher, whereby he's at liberty to lay in the hammock every day in the week between the Other hours. Other angles, too, Gov. Yeah? My friends, Nicer's friends, my relatives, Nicer's relatives, you and Mom's guests, Mr. and Miss Scott's guests. Would they all expect to lay in the hammock? Well, wouldn't they? I hadn't considered that aspect of the situation. Mom's pal, Miss Kreider, calls frequently, and about three out of every four times she calls, she has to lay down on a kind of a headache. Wouldn't it be natural for Mom to say, Miss Kreider, go outdoors and stretch out in our hammock a few minutes? Mm. <laughs> I doubt if I'd say that. Be natural for you, too. And then, Gov, there's Hank Gutstock. He likes laying down better than eating dinner. If he found out you were the proprietor of a hammock, he'd be on hand every afternoon. Mm. Then there's Miss Scott's brother. He's in town a lot. And all my friends, Smelly Clark, Bluetooth Johnson, Rooster Davis, Leroy Snow, Leland Richards, Russell Duncan... Milton Wells, Cracciato, whole slew. That hammock would resemble a can of sardines on brisk days. Uncle Fletcher's landlady will be another party that'll expect to enjoy it. After all, it's her property. Mm -hmm. If you and C visits us from Carberry this summer, she'll want to use it. Miss Stembana might want to stretch out for a snooze occasionally, Mom. And Miss Brighton and Miss Trogel and Miss Heddles and Miss Healy. And then there's Nicer's pals. Ed Hago, Scissorneck Edwards... Bill Veepley, Fat Morris, Wilbert Stang. You yes, see, that hammock will resemble a can of sardines on brisk days. <laughs> oh, beg pardon. Didn't realize anybody else was in here. Think no more about it. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Harrison. Uh, my name is Mr. Brown. Glad to form your acquaintance. Shake hands with my friend, Mr. Kilgore. Oh, thought we was the only ones in this hammock. Not at all. My cousin William's underneath here someplace. And those uh, feet with the brown oxfords belong to my Uncle George. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes smothered and forgotten. It presents quite a problem. I'd forget the whole thing, Willie. Oh. On top of my objections to asking Miss Scott for the use of her backyard this summer, I'd also hate to be responsible for somebody else's property. Oh. Another thing, our family's always been unlucky with hammocks. Unlucky? Your grandfather fell out of one in Stanwood, Iowa, and broke his collarbone. My cousin Robert fell out of one in St. Paul, Minnesota, and smashed his thumb to where he had to give up playing the violin. Uncle Fletcher himself fell out of a hammock once. Got a goose egg on his forehead big as my shoe. Oh. Of course, I don't make anything superstitious out of that or anything, but, you know, oh. no sense in waving the red flag at the angry bull. Oh. So... Take it all in all. Maybe you better thank Uncle Fletcher for the hammock very kindly next time you see him and say you're afraid it won't work out. No. Don't you think so? Okay. I like the notion of a hammock out in Scott's backyard on a good brisk day. <laughs> a lot of people after it, you mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> Darn it, I never knew this hammock was occupied. Perfectly all right. Crawl right in. I'm Mr. John Williams. I'm Mr. Sam Jackson. Meet my son, Harry. Where's he? Down underneath here someplace. Oh, Harry!
which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. 